So this template project that we created just has the basic index CSS and JavaScript files. Not much functionality. It loads up and it um, just basically is waiting for something to happen. Not very interesting. So what we'll do is we'll explore the Cordova documentation a bit and see how adding a plugin lets us add more features. Um, go ahead and open up your web browser. We'll go to cordova.apache.org. So, briefly, at the documentation screen at the top, it breaks it down into a variety of chapters for a variety of tasks that you may want to accomplish. Also, by platform. Under documentation, this is kind of a good, like, book to go through chapter by chapter, in a sense, or just jump to what you care about. Uh, so what support, what platform support and all of that, how to develop specifically for iOS, store data, customize icons, it's all here, and then plugins, and, and further chapters on a particular platform. You can actually embed Cordova in a native app. So if you've already got code in Android Studio or Xcode, there is a way to then implement Cordova into it. It's a bit of a Frankenstein app, I suppose. And then it goes on with full details about, okay, here's your config XML file, here's all the possible fields that you can add, even extra things, um, like orientation lock and other things. And then the plugins, which is the same as looking at plugins at the top. Just to see how it works, I want to play with this plugin for a moment. Dialogs. So either in the documentation screen, find dialogs all the way down somewhere, or in plugins screen. Oh, never mind. This one goes to the different, I forgot. This one goes to the other plugin repository, where you can go look at more third party plugins. So you can search plugins uh, for doing even more things. So here's what's this one? PS. PSP, PS PDF kit. So something about a PDF kit. Uh, okay. I meant, uh, so on the documentation on the left, scroll all the way down to get to the section of plugins. And we'll look at the one called dialogues. So this documentation is very technical, as most of this type of documentation is. It gives you a general sense of what the plugin does, it gives you example code, and then it often gives you the full explanation of like options and features and such. So from the dialog screen here, here's how to install it. We, get, we have the various methods listed below in example code. So Cordova plugin Dialogs provides access to some native dialog UI elements via a global navigator dot notification object. So we already have, we still have, that is, the ability to write JavaScript code that would have been alert, welcome user. We could still write that basic JavaScript code. But that's going to create a sort of a pop-up that looks like a web browser, not like the pop-up that you might see in iOS or Android. So there's a plugin that taps into the native-looking user interface. You're going to see that term a lot, native. And that means basically how does it look originally in iOS, in Android, in Windows, whatever? UI, user, what is that user UI? Suddenly I'm blanking on it. User, user interface, yes. User interface. So in an event, in, in a device ready function, 
we can do, for example, navigator.notification. This is putting it out to the console. That's interesting. But it's navigator.notification. This is what creates the native version of an alert. Installation either via the, the command prompt, we would have typed Cordova, plugin, add, and then the name of this plugin. In Visual Studio, how do we do it instead? Walk me through it. I've shown enough that you might have the answer. I want to add a plugin to this project. Where might I go for that? Config file, yes. And then plugins. And then it's a little bit of a trick question because I think dialogues is not exactly called dialogues. A B C D dialogues. I don't see dialogues. It's in a different spot. Where do they put it? You can also see there's like the pretty name geolocation. And then there's the internal plugin name right there. Cordova plugin geolocation. So if you don't see dialogues, where else do you see it? Notifications. Notifications. So that's a little weird thing about it. I was looking for dialogues, mm -hmm. but it's Cordova plugin dialogues. That's what the documentation is saying. Internally, the name of this plugin in the system is Cordova plugin dialogues. Cool, I found the right plugin. What's next? Add. add. Yep. Go ahead and add it. And it'll take a moment because it's going to connect back to the Cordova mothership. And it'll give you the feedback right there. And it's going to get the files, unzip it, install it into the project, and then eventually green. It's installed. And you can confirm by looking at the column of install. I put in camera, you didn't need to, I'm removing it, and it's just selected and remove it. Anyway, so I've got the uh, notifications. We should have the notifications. Um, we should have the notifications plugin installed. Back on the documentation. We have these methods. We have these commands. We have these methods of an object. We'll have the navigator object, notification, alert method, confirm method, prompt method, and beep method. So we already have the basic built-in JavaScript alert, which looks like a web browser pop-up. But now we have navigator.notification Dot alert, which looks like a real Android pop-up. We also have prompt. When did we use prompt? Not prompt. Confirm. When did we use confirm? What's that? In one of the forms, when we wanted to log out, it it uh, had asked, "Are you sure you want to log out?" Didn't didn't we? So we asked for a confirm. So now we have a more uh, iOS looking confirm box. <laughs> Okay, so for example, alert. It shows a custom alert or dialog box. Most Cordova implementations use a native dialog box for this feature, but some use the browser's alert, and it'll tell you which ones. Those are less customizable. The full code is navigator.notification.alert method, so it's got parentheses, and then it has arguments, some required, some optional. It doesn't quite tell you enough, I wish it would, but it's very common in, in documentation for it to give you code like this, and it kind of assumes that eventually you learned that anything in brackets is optional. Anything not in brackets is required. I would have liked it that it would have said it somewhere, I'm sure it says it somewhere, but eventually when you learn this, this is what that is. So it is required some sort of message to display in the box, 
an alert callback function is required. That's very different than what we've worked with before, with the, with the alerts and confirms. And then optionally, you can change the title of the little box that pops up. When we have the box popping up as a plain old uh, alert box, there wasn't a customization ability. Right there. Apache Cordova says, welcome. Can't customize that, really. Well, with this new plugin, we can. It's optional. We can even customize the names of our buttons. For example, the alert box. So title dialog, optional, defaults to alert. It will say alert. If you don't change it, it's optional. It's in brackets. It's in brackets just for the documentation. We don't write the brackets in the real code. Another confusing thing. Optionally is the name of the button. The default is going to say OK. If I wanted to say something like great, then I add a fourth argument in quotes because it's a string, and that changes the name of the button. So this documentation tells you your first argument is a message. What's the dialog message? It's a string in quotes, comma, alert callback, invokes, call back to invoke when alert dialog box is dismissed. It's a function. It's in function syntax. Title. It's a string and it's optional, and button name, it's a string and it's optional. Furthermore, here's some more real version of the code. So Navigator.notification, it could be all one long line, or they broke it into multiple lines simply to make it readable. First argument is the message and the callback from the title and the button, and no final comma. Function is in callback syntax in that it doesn't have the parentheses. So be careful about that. If we did need to pass options, if there was a particular method that you, we wanted to pass an option or an argument into the function, we'd have to do it in a slightly different way, as we'll see later. But this means a function will run, which is required after the person closes the dialog box. The example then says, okay, here's our function. Alert, dismiss, do something else. Maybe play a sound, maybe save something in the database. Let's give this one a try. We can simply copy this whole example and tweak it a little bit. So here in the dialogs, our first example of alert, copy that whole chunk. <clears throat> in Visual Studio, in the JS file, they're all called index now, so I'm going to over and over say up wrong. Let's go to our index file. Well, which one? It's going to be JavaScript, CSS, or HTML. Go to your JS file. Everything we write in JavaScript regarding Cordova should be inside of the onDeviceReady function. And all of the documentation will remind us of that. It's got to be in device ready. So anywhere in device ready, at the moment it doesn't matter. But let's say we'll add it after. Make sure you're still inside of the on device ready function. I might find it a little nice to put a note there and end on device ready. It's optional. But anyway, paste it in. Here's some other cool things about Visual Studio. It changes the color over here of areas that you've made changes to. And over here it also shows you about your whole document. Once you make a change and you save it, that then turns green. And anywhere where you made changes in the code will be highlighted as long as the file is open. So you will get markers that show you where you've made changes. Yellow has not been saved, and then green has been saved. And then over here you get a sense in general of the whole file 
the blue line is where my current line is of code. So even if I'm way down here, my cursor is way up there, and I've changed all of that code. Most code editors, Notepad's getting a little bit on in age, so many other editors have this version, but uh, this sort of thing. But uh, this is another reason why you know moving, starting your project from Visual Studio from the beginning could be very useful. Anyway, we'll paste this in. And the example said, you're going to get an alert that says, you are the winner in a string. After the person clicks the Done button, it will then go back over here to Alert Dismissed to do something. Let's do console.log. And here you'll, you'll get the automatic code completion and a really cool, powerful one. This is using IntelliSense, which is like uh, Microsoft's uh, very cool, I think it's Microsoft's very cool implementation of code inting. So same as Notepad, where you can start to write and then press tab for it to fill it for you. This is a little bit smarter because it should only show you valid code, or valid, um, uh, yeah, valid code that adds to it. Console log. Um, here it's saying the log should have a message. You can have parameters, etc. We'll just say uh, we closed the dialog. Semicolon there. So all of this here in green is what I added, and go ahead and save it, and then uh, run it. So we'll click the little green Run button. It'll load up in the browser. Right away it should give you that pop-up, because we didn't set up this, this notification.alert in any special way. We didn't put it as a, as a result of clicking something. We didn't put it as some other kind of trigger. It just happened. As soon as the code, as soon as... Uh, the code got up to line 27, it ran that method, it invoked that method, and then it did it with no special prompting. It just popped up alert with those messages. Keyboard shortcut F5 will let you quickly uh, run it, either as a simulator or device, once we've got devices set up. That's the same as going up to Debug menu, Start Debugging, F5. That's a quick shortcut there. So the first time you run the code in the first time of the day, it's going to be the slowest because it has to set itself up with a bunch of stuff. Subsequent times are faster. When we add new plugins and such, it's going to be slow again the first time because it's brand new code that needs to be compiled. Subsequent times will be faster. And then here now I get a dialog box that looks a lot more like an Android kind of dialog box instead of the classic plain old uh, web browser pop-up. And it's centered and it's got a little title, game over, the text that we wrote and the and the and the word done instead of the default of OK. Well, back on Visual Studio, I also have this JavaScript console. And it, it might have stuff already there. This is, uh, this is stuff that I remembered from the last time I compiled it. If this is kind of getting too cluttered, you can uh, clear the console right there. We have a whole JavaScript console panel here in Visual Studio. You don't want to press F12 in Chrome that will actually break the debugging connection between Visual Studio and Chrome. Just go back and run it again. And maybe all of this stuff is kind of already there cluttered. I'm going to clear it just so that it shows the latest console output. When I close that, on your index file, line 23, column 20, it said we close the dialog.
So on my line 23 of the JavaScript, let me close the dialog. I'm going to stop debugging and go back. This one was the alert. We have also confirm and prompt. Let's say I want to work with prompt. You can scroll down or you can click on prompt and it'll take you to the right spot. Displays a native dialog box that is a more customizable than the browser's prompt. So this one's got a message required, a callback function required, a title, optional, button labels, and default text. So this is going to be, uh, we'll do this one. Well, this is be like this will be like a pop-up that'll say, please sign in, and a spot for them to sign in with, with an email, let's say. So message string, callback, callback to invoke with index of button pressed. So we can, this can have up to three buttons. This dialog box can have up to three buttons, not just OK and cancel. It could have a third one. And each one then has a built-in uh, index, one, two, or three. Um, I believe it is one, two, or three, not zero, one, or two. When the dialog is dismissed, if you, if you, then there's a fourth one. If you close the little X, instead of picking one of those options, you get a fourth one, a zero. Dialog, button labels. Array of strings specifying button labels. This is optional. But the default is you're going to have OK and cancel. If you want a third button in an array syntax, so square brackets, the name of the first button, comma, the name of the second button, comma, the name of the third button, in quotes. And if we want the little dialog to be automatically filled in with some kind of placeholder text, we have an empty, we have a string as the last one. There's the example here. We can copy this one. Button index. The index of the press button. Note that the index uses one based indexing. So values are 1, 2, 3 for some reason instead of 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to comment out what I had there before. We have a way to comment everything at once. How do you do that? Uh, edit. Is a keyboard shortcut that I don't remember to comment all of that at once. Comment, comment selection, control K, edit advanced comment selection. You've got this really cool search in Visual Studio to search anything about Visual Studio, so I needed the shortcut to comment all of that out at once, control K. OK, or not. Oh, where is it at? Comment okay, selection. Okay. I was doing Control K, but it didn't do it. Control K and Control C? So you do Control K, then Control C? Okay, let's check that. Control K, then Control C. Yeah, I guess. I don't like individual control all delete. Control all delete. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's undo. So uh, I thought there was a multi line comment another way, but let's see one more time. Um, edit advanced. Uncommon increase. 
way too much effort for this. So obviously, simply slash. You know what? Actually, I think you can do select it and then this, this keyboard shortcut that I'll look for it later. So anyway, comment that out. We see that the alert works. Instead, I want this other one, this prompt. So um, I commented out the old um, dialog, and here's a new one. So no navigator.notification.prompt. Please enter your name comma after pressing something or doing something upon this dialog on prompt function will be called the name up in the title bar will be registration I've got two buttons OK and exit and by default it will say Jane Doe as a placeholder once I click OK or can't or exit it'll run the on prompt passing in automatically a results object so sometimes we need to manually pass something into a function but oftentimes when you get to these higher levels using these APIs it automatically kicks back an object that we then use so there's automatically a results object that is going into on prompt we have to mention that we're getting that result, or data, or whatever we want to call it, if we want to rename it. And then we get a plain old alert, which is ironic. Why didn't they use the native alert? And then it'll say, you selected button mark number plus results object dot button index property. So that'll tell us, did they press button one or button two? Continuing the string, then it'll say results dot input one. So there's an input one property of the results object, which is what did they type in that input box. This is an input box, and it's being stored as the property input1 as part of the results object from successfully clicking a button. So running that, or saving it, then running it, F5, I can test it. I could do this while the simulation is running, I just have to remember to save it and then it'll, it'll add it. But here I'm doing it obviously by closing the simulation, then uh, running the code, and then checking it. Um, that. Oh, uh, no, wait, wait, wait. no, I should have done that. What am I missing? So, yours worked? Okay, what am I missing here? Did I? It's not commented out. So if it worked, you would get a pop-up that looks like a native element. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it looks like a native element and um, that can be styled and such, but it's going to inherit the design of the user's style. So if the user chose a really fun My Little Pony theme for their phone, then it'll look like a My Little Pony theme. This is a generic Android one, so it looks kind of weird. Generic. But there's the text, placeholder text. It's at my name, but instead I, I forget it, I'll click exit. Well then, the next, then the callback function invokes plain old alert. You selected button number two and entered Victor. So if I put John Smith and click OK, get the alert again, and it says you selected button one and enter John Smith. So that's what I have here. Button 1, 
button 2. When I clicked exit, it said it was button 2. Knowing that, results dot button index. Knowing that, I can create if-else statements, I can create case statements, I can deal with what happens when a person exits or clicks OK. What happens when a person clicks cancel or maybe Maybe cancel and OK. Now the the opposite the order is a little bit opposite than I would have thought it. Third one, second one, first one. But uh, that's up to the device. So I have here a fourth. I have a third button, which will be results button index three. And again, if I uh, you know wanted to get really fancy, you don't have to do this. But if we had case, we'll do all of this. Um, results dot button index <coughs> not case a switch and we have a case one do whatever break case two do whatever break so we have we can use that we can do switch we can do loops we can do if else we can do all of that stuff uh, again, these are the pieces. Great, I know how now to make a pop-up. What do I do with it? What do you do with it? That's your idea. So as we make our CBDB project, uh, what we currently have of the login prompt and all of that, it's fine. But if we want it to look more like a real native project, we should rewrite it eventually to use the, the built-in native uh, prompts and such. It's a little more code than uh, the other one because we have this callback function and we have to learn some new stuff. But ultimately the result is creating a project that feels more like a mobile project than a project that is, feels more like a web project. So... So this is, uh, this is going to be the gist. I have a plan of what we're going to create, but you're free to look through here and figure out, okay, to CBDB, I also want to add uh, device motion. I want it to keep track of when the device moves to store some kind of information. Uh, we can check acceleration and all of that. Uh, so if a person, I can check, did a person uh, put down the app? You know, they were using the app and they put it down. We can detect that. We can do something with it. So that's going to be something that we can do. But we're going to create the CBDB app to, to save inventory items. We're going to use the camera. We're going to use a barcode scanner. We're going to use social media. Um, we're going to create this project where we can add more to it if necessary. Maybe, you know, media capture. We can have it record audio notes on that particular comic in the inventory. I'm going to give you another handout, then we'll wrap up for the moment. Uh, we can have a little lab time if you'd like. This handout is your step zero that you need to do every time you come into the lab. Every time you come into the lab, you have to sort of wake up Visual Studio for usage because we saw the first time that we did compile, it took a while. So instead of us waiting for that to happen in the middle of the lecture, I'd like for you to get used to doing what's inside of step zero. I just added it. How to zero, set up your station. I'd like you to do that every time you come in, first of all. We'll do it the first time together or so, and then I'd like you to do it so that we don't waste our time. But every time we come in, you're going to need to do this. 
start Visual Studio, probably sign in. I forgot to put that step. Start Visual Studio and sign in. Start a blank, empty, temporary quick document, and then just test it right away so that it can connect back to the Cordova mothership and download the ancillary files that get erased every time we turn off these computers because we have deep freeze. Um, so again, just go through there, run it, test it in the browser, that's fine. When we talk about setting up devices, we'll ha also have to do that. And what we'll have to do every time we come in, we'll have to install the driver to your device on our computer. Next time we will talk about that, because if you're going to start to use your own device, you need to find your driver, install it, and so forth, and every time we come in, so I don't want to hear over and over, why doesn't my phone work? Because I'm just going to point back to the handout and say, did you do this part? Um, so you're going to need to do that on the device. Obviously, the ones that I have for us are ready to go. But your own device, you'll need to install the driver and all of that, which we'll look at next time. And then you can debug it on your Android device and just, just run it, and that's it. And then close that, close that solution. We just need a temporary quick test file to download the files, to run the emulator simulator one time, and then we'll work with our real projects. And I'd like you to do that every time we come in so that it's faster throughout the day. Those notes, those links again, you can check out. Any questions on things we've talked about today so far? Okay, so we'll have some lab time for a little bit if you'd like it. I'll turn on the printer if you want to print any of this. I do think it's kind of handy to have these printed out. You've got nice big monitors and you could put the handout next to what you're working on, but uh, eventually when we do some of this stuff it's nice to have a printout next to your next to your screen. The videos that I'm recording here, uh, you need to request uh, a new link. These are in a new playlist. Uh, make sure you signed in, uh, enrolled, and we're off in uh, part two of the class.